This week's episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures takes us to the Nunavut region of the Northwest Territories on a hunt for the amazingly tough muskox. Steve West and his client Dave Schlotman brave sub-zero temperatures and blinding snow in pursuit of this incredible big game animal. We're hunting the umimuk on another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. I'm Steve West, professional hunting consultant, and these are my adventures. Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by Scope Coat, Stormcloth 2, Mossy Oak, Direct TV, The Montana Decoy Company, Tillamook Country Smoker, Burris Optics, and by the new Burris Eliminator Laser Scope. Just range them and eliminate them. Welcome to this week's episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Today we're going to take you to the Arctic on a spring hunt for muskox. We're joining longtime friend and client David Schlotman on his quest for one of North America's most underrated trophies. But in my opinion, a muskox hunt offers one of the greatest adventures available to hunters today. The muskox is an Arctic mammal which is noted for its thick coat and for the strong odor emitted by the males, from which its name derives. Both sexes have long curved horns and muskox stand three to four feet high at the shoulder and weigh an average of 600 to 850 pounds. The thick coat and large head often suggest a larger animal than the muskox truly are. Their coat, a mix of gray, black, and brown, includes long guard hairs that reach almost to the ground. Muskoxen are social and live in herds usually of around 10 to 20, but on occasion in herds of over 70 animals. The circumpolar status of muskoxen is a conservation success story. The recovery of populations in Canada and Greenland and the recolonization of former ranges is greatly due to the conservation efforts of hunters worldwide. Reintroductions have been successful in Alaska, Russia, West Greenland, and Quebec. In fact, of the world's estimated 150,000 musk oxen, 130,000 are found in Canada's Northwest and none of its territories, with over 110,000 animals found on Canada's Victoria and Banks Islands alone. There's no shortage of musk oxen, and hunting is required to be sure that they do not overpopulate their delicate Arctic habitat. The previous fall, David and I were caribou hunting in the Northwest Territories with my guide, Sam Kapilak. Sam asked if we'd be interested in coming back on March 1st to hunt for musk oxen in the snow and ice. David and I have a pretty strong sense of adventure, so we both agreed and booked the hunt. We had absolutely no idea what we were getting into, but what an adventure. get on over to the hotel it's late we got a hunt to begin early in the morning or at least the drive to the hunt.
Stay with us, guys. When we return, the muskox hunting adventure begins as the hunters scour the frozen tundra in search of a trophy bull. Hey, y'all, this is Travis Tripp. You're watching Steve's Outdoor Adventures right here on the Outdoor Channel. As the guides fueled up the snow machines, Steve and Dave took some time to check the zero on their rifles after the long trip to camp. Fire in the hole, boys. More money. Gun sighted in perfect. Yeah, let's go ahead and have you shoot the ball. Anytime we fly somewhere, we've got to we've got to check our zero. So, yo, know, folks, that's definitely a, a requisite for any trip where you fly or, or do any substantial travel. As soon as you get to where you're going to hunt, get a target out and check your zero. You know, I checked it using my AccuSight in the room, but uh, there's nothing like double checking it with a bullet. We've got thousands of dollars invested in these expensive guided hunts. There's no sense, you know, wounding an animal or missing an animal, a trophy animal at that, you know, just because. Well, hey, swap me spots, Dave, and uh, just smack that bottle again, brother. When we arrived at the cabins that were located at the main lake, we were informed by the guides that we would be taking snowmobiles and sled boxes to another lake that were located in some rocky areas, say 30, 40 miles to the northeast. That's where they had two cabins at a place called Nose Lake. Well, that's where we were headed. The muskox, they liked these rocky areas and the guides were pretty confident that we'd find a herd there. The Comatex sled is about 12 feet long and the rear half is the sitting box or the windshield where the hunter rides. The front half of the sled is where they pack the supplies like food, fuel, sleeping bags, and other necessities. It glides across the frozen snow on ceramic rudders being pulled approximately 10 to 15 feet behind a snowmobile. All right, folks, we're up here in a group of uh, three snowmobiles with three of the Comatex. And uh, our guide, Sam, here, what, what he does is he cruises along. We're looking for tracks, uh, getting to high points and glassing, looking for groups of musk ox or wolf out in the distance. And uh, what well, you say we've gone about four or five miles yeah, today? We're kind of about four miles from camp right now, and we're yeah. sitting on a nice high hill. You can see a long ways. And um, well, I, I looked around with my binoculars just uh, a couple of minutes ago, and I haven't spotted anything yet. So that's the way we usually hunt the muskox and the wolves. So you just find a nice high spot and just glass and glass, and some days we'll just see them out there. Well. So you think we're going to end up going a lot further to the northeast then? And we are, yeah. We'll probably go probably another 10 miles and then we'll turn, turn around and then we'll head back and come back down the lake. Back towards the camp uh, in a uh, different route or a different route. We'll okay. just make a big big circle and then go back to camp before, before dark. Excellent. Well, it's pretty easy riding in the Comatex, so it's what I would like to term as a gentleman's hunt. <laughs> Easy going, so. Well, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's hit it. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. All right. After loading up their gear and checking their rifles, it was time to head even further north in search of muskox. The plan was to travel from our base camp at Pellet Lake 30 miles across this frozen snow-covered tundra to a couple of cabins at Nose Lake. And while we were traveling there, we were looking for the musk ox, but we didn't find any. However, the cabins at Nose Lake were located on top of a hill, and the surrounding hills were real rocky, which is prime habitat for the musk ox. When we got there, we realized that these were two very, very basic cabins. Four walls, a roof, and a couple of oil heaters. Then again, we weren't there for the five-star accommodations. We're up here on top of a high spot where we can see about 
four or five miles off, we're looking at all these rocky spots where the muskox like to hang out. And uh, beautiful sunny day, hoping to locate our first group of muskox. Good optics are a must. Now we knew it would be cold when we got there. In fact, most of the musk ox hunts are done in early April when the temperatures are a bit warmer. But we chose to go the first week of March. And the cold, well, it was unbearable at times. In fact, there was one instance where the temperature was minus 70 with the wind chill factor. Well folks, uh, we just finished our first day out on the, on the ice. We, uh, we covered probably about 25 miles, maybe 28. And uh, we cut some older musk ox tracks way back over this way here. And we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. We're down out of daylight, you know. But uh, tomorrow we're gonna pack up and actually head that direction where they, they all went. We're going to another camp over there about 30 miles away. And uh, I'm telling you, it's cold. It's gotta be somewhere between 30 and 35 below zero at the moment. So we're gonna go inside our little bungalows here, our little cabins, get our gear ready for tomorrow and get warmed up. So, man, I don't know how these animals survive up here because it's cold and there isn't a lot to eat. Um, well, tomorrow's a new day. The long hours of searching in sub-zero weather pays off as Dave Schlopman stalks a huge muskox after commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs>